Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be installing a vehicle mounted solar charging system. This will reduce the load in the vehicle's charging system while keeping the batteries topped off. If the battery were to go dead because I left something on, I can always charge the battery from solar to start the vehicle. We will be installing this dual battery isolator kit along with two AGM batteries. We will mount this 50 watt solar panel on the roof and couple it with a 10 amp MPPT charge controller. This charge controller is perfect for vehicles. It's compact, it's rugged, it's waterproof, and comes with Bluetooth. It will accept up to 130 watts of solar input and has a charging output of 10 amps. It also has a 12 volt 10 amp load output so you can power USB devices, LED lighting, or small 12 volt appliances directly off the solar panels or batteries. Let's get started. I'm using Renogy RV and camper mounts for the solar panel. I picked up some rubber pad to use under the aluminum mounts to help dampen any vibration from the vehicle. The pad will also provide some protection from water linking in through the roof. I'm using only stainless steel hardware to prevent rusting. I'm using nylocks, nuts, and lock washers to ensure the mounts do not come loose over time. I drilled the holes just large enough so that the bolt would have to cut threads into the aluminum roof. This should make it stronger and provide more water protection. Man, that was a lot of work. All right, all the holes are drilled for the solar panel. It's just sitting here temporarily. Now we can remove the panel and drill a hole down into the cab for the wire to run down to the charge controller. We can also install the charge controller inside the vehicle. Let's go. This stupid grommet was very hard to get into the hole. I wanted a tight fit, so I made the hole as small as possible. Next, we need to extend the MC4 connection from the charge controller to the solar panel. and now our MC4 extension harness is complete. Next, we need to tie up the MC4 cables from the solar panel to the frame so they don't bounce around. Now we can connect the solar panel and feed the wires into the cab.
Do a quick voltage test. Eight volts. Female connectors go inside the one with the rubber garment, and this holds it in place. And the male connectors go inside the empty one, and this holds the wedge holds this in place. For the solar connection, I'm using a DT connector, commonly used in automotive applications. If I ever need to rewire the solar panel, I can remove the pins from the connector and pull them through the hole in the roof. The two pin connector was giving me some trouble while trying to install the lock wedge. The wedge has to go behind those prongs. If you get if you get in front of them, it won't go all the way down. So it has to go behind them so that when you push the wedge in, it squeezes those prongs against the wires, holds it in against the pins. For the battery and load port connections, we will be using XT60 connectors. These are easy to use and can handle a lot of abuse and fit together nicely. Commonly used in RC and drone applications. We have our battery charging output here, our solar input here, and our load output here. Our hardware includes machine screws, washers, lock washers, nuts, and rubber washers. We can apply some double-sided tape. Now we can stick and drill our holes. I didn't really like screwing the screws up through the roof, but I didn't want them sticking out into the cab either. Now we can put our rubber washer washer, lock washer, and nut, and tighten everything up. Our charge controller is mounted. Check it out, this thing sits so nice up in here. It should never, it should never really get wet. Even if it does, it's waterproof, so who cares? Let's connect the solar. First, we will crimp the female ferro pins onto the wire. Now we can insert the pins into the connector and install the retainer. Our solar connection is complete. First, we need to feed the battery wire up through the cage and to the charge controller. Remove the dash and route the wire down through the dash cavity. Let's say I cut them evenly, right, at the same place, where your connections would line up like this. And if for whatever reason your shielding or your heat shrink failed, these could potentially touch together. So if you stagger them, and then you have your shielding here and your shielding here, even if the shielding uh, deteriorated, yeah, the wire could possibly come back. It would be more difficult for it to come back and touch that. So especially if you tape it up, after the after you put your heat shrink on, you tape it up right here. There's no way that these connections could short because they're staggered. That's it. Connections done. Get the three here. We use a 12 gauge ring terminal. Not only does this work better. A lot more work, yes. But it looks a lot cleaner as well. 
put some new hardware in there. New washer, new lock washer. And that. And now our battery connection is complete. So we just want to see um, if the charge controller is powered up, and it should be. And there we have it. We have our three lights. So let's go into the app and see what we can find. Okay, the first thing we need to do is check for voltage coming from the solar panel. And here we have it, 12 volts. It's nighttime, so we won't get enough power to charge the battery from the ambient light. Next, we need to set the battery type so the controller knows how to charge our battery. It's set to lithium, but we need to set it to AGM. Let's do that now. And now we are good to go. I'll check back in the morning and see if we can get it to actually charge the battery. The cables that came with the isolator kit have 1 4th inch ring terminals. We need to swap one end to a 3 8 ring terminal for the main battery connection. We will use heavy duty wire cutters and a hydraulic lug crimping tool. I really like this glue filled heat shrink tubing. Now we can hook up the isolator. If I were to just connect these batteries in parallel, you know, negative to negative, positive, positive, we would essentially have one huge battery, right? 42 amp hours plus 28 amp hours. One big battery, and the charging system on these vehicles are not that good. They'll put out about 40 amps. So um, to take the stress off of the charging system, we move all our accessories to the smaller battery, and then we have this isolator that connects the smaller battery to the larger battery only when the larger battery is fully charged. So the, the vehicle is only charging one battery at a time. It'll charge up the main battery, and once that's topped off, the isolator will kick in and connect the, the, the uh, auxiliary battery to the main and then we'll start charging the auxiliary battery. We're going to mount it right here. I don't use any, hardly any of the original hardware. I always go get my own hardware. Okay. Okay, now that everything's hooked up, we're going to do a real world test. We're going to turn on all the light bars and drain the battery down completely to zero until the vehicle won't even start. And then we'll take the vehicle and roll it out into the driveway and charge it up from solar and see how long it takes to get enough charge to be able to start the vehicle. But in the meantime, I want to show you the load port. Alright, so you guys remember this from our last video, our recent video. I've connected an XT60 connector on our USB panel and I have a USB powered light and I just had it temporarily sitting up here on the roof just to show you what you can do with this. So I'm going to plug this into the load port on the charge controller. I probably plan to mount this somehow up here maybe when I can charge my phone, any USB stuff. Uh, I got a car adapter outlet so I can run uh, my air pump and whatever volt appliances so it's pretty useful and it'll run directly off the solar panel or the battery so I have the low port configured to uh, manual mode so I have to go into the app and turn it on via Bluetooth so when you're in the app it shows the load port is currently off so we go to farm settings go to load farm and then we'll turn the load port on and now our USB panel is activated and our light is on. I can additionally leave the port on at 24-7, just leave it on all the time and I can just control my USB output through the switch right here on my panel. 
So just showing you what you can do with this thing. It's pretty cool. You can run uh, up to 10 amps on this load port. So let's plug in an air pump and see if we can power that. This is the pump I use when I go riding. So the pump is off and I'm just going to turn the switch on on the USB panel and it'll turn on the pump. Bad connection. phone and do it via the Bluetooth. Turn it off. Now it's off. Pretty cool. The light's blinking on our solar charge controller, so that's charging the battery right now. Let's uh, try to start the vehicle while it's in the sun, just to make sure it's dead. So it's still dead. Let's check out the app. All right, so we have a PV voltage of 19.4 volts. That's pretty good. And we're charging with three amps, over three amps. So the battery voltage is already at 10 volts. So it's going to need to get to about 12 volts before we can actually try to start the vehicle. So let's come back later and we'll check it every 30 minutes. We want to see exactly how long it's going to take. Because if you're stuck out somewhere, we want to know how long it's going to take. Now it's just about 30, just about over 30 minutes. Check out the solar panel. Right? Full sun. Let's go check the vehicle. Okay guys, it is 2.14, so it's been, what? 34 minutes so our battery voltage is at 11.6 already so let's go ahead and see if we can start it and we're still charging with 2.56 amps <laughs> what just 30 minutes that's crazy it took just 30 minutes granted the battery i mean the battery was dead enough for the vehicle not to start but you can imagine, even at 8 volts, it doesn't take long to get it up to about 12 volts to where it'll start. Now, the starter on here is pretty small, but still, 30 minutes, that's completely acceptable. If you're stuck somewhere in a desert, you don't want to be out there for hours and hours and hours on end, obviously. Like the 5 watt charger I had, that thing took days. You'd be dead. <laughs> but 30 minutes, 30 minutes is definitely acceptable and perfect. It's, it's great. I like it. Well, that was a fun video, guys, to make, and uh, it was a lot of work and a long process, but I think it has a very good utilitarian um, purpose. Um, I didn't install the dual battery monitor because it's kind of a pain in the butt. You have to connect a, re a reverse polarity uh, relay, and frankly, I don't really have any room on my dash. It just monitors the state of both batteries, but I can do that through the vehicle dash and also through the Bluetooth app. So, I don't know, maybe one day if I'm bored, I'll do that. But one thing that I found was interesting with the uh, with the isolator, the isolator will actually charge in both directions. So whichever battery reaches 13.8 uh, volts first, it will then connect through to the other battery. So before, when I first hooked that up, I had the solar charger connected to the auxiliary battery only. So, and if the vehicle is off, not charging obviously, not charging from the vehicle, um, the auxiliary battery, so the isolator would disconnect the batteries, right? When the vehicle is off, that's normally what happens. But because the solar was pushing power to the auxiliary battery, the auxiliary battery got to 13.8 volts, and then it connected and reverse charge to the main battery, which I thought was pretty cool. So it'll go either way. Whichever way the charge is coming from, if it's coming from your vehicle charging system, it'll pass it through to the auxiliary, or if it's coming from your auxiliary, it'll pass it through to your uh, vehicle so they both both batteries end up getting charged either way so yeah well thanks for watching guys and i hope you enjoyed it